So, you know, the key phrase in Tinseltown nowadays is genre bending. This is where one film begins uh, to take on different aspects, okay? So you might have, for example, you go over on this side and you get like maybe a comedy or something uh, mixed into the main story and you go up on this side and you get a little bit of action mixed into the main story and it's genre bending. Wow, tonight's movie doesn't genre bend, it's genre breaks. It starts out here. Then it goes up here. <laughs> that cinematic class is about to begin. And your professor is in. <laughs> Greetings, salutations, and other sundry affair. I am your cinematic professor and the purveyor of truth in movies. And tonight's lesson plan is a film called Wrong Place, Wrong Time. Very aptly made. You know, when this movie started out, I thought it was going to be a real intense action film. Well, it opens in the middle of a battle. Okay, and this group is fighting the FBI. This is a full out street battle, and we see collateral damage all the way around. We see all kind of fighting back and forth, what have you. After the opening action scene, which is done rather well, we find out that this group that was doing battle with the FBI is actually a group of, uh, well, if you will, they're kind of like mercenaries, but what their plan is, their plan is to rob the giant drug cartels. This includes both the Mexican cartel and the Russian cartel. Now, they don't just want to rob them. <laughs> Nothing quite that simple. What they want to do is still steal the passcodes for the bank accounts from these guys and literally drain their funds. Rather ambitious, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I would too. So this opening battle is the first encounter of the things that they need to pull off this, this mission. All right. We set up part two and we figure, well, okay, this is going to be an even bigger battle because now not only are the FBI really pissed off because some of their guys were killed and they're after these guys. But now both cartels understand what's going on and they're coming after them. All right. Second battle comes around and you know what? It just, it doesn't go real good. There could be a Judas in the group. But the aftermath is bad because one of their own is wounded and shot. Oh, ah, this cannot be good, okay? So as they're driving away, wondering what could possibly have gone wrong, how they possibly can recoup this lost battle, they realize their compadre needs a little bit of help. Otherwise, he's going to bleed out, all right? So we see up in the distance a nice little farmhouse. Maybe we should pull in there get him situated, get some medical supplies, stem the bleeding, and then eventually get him some medical help down the road. Sounds like a pretty good plan. And then, bang! The entire movie changes. All right, listen up. We got the SWIFT codes, the BICs for all the major dealers. If anyone doesn't want to accept the risks, take your shares up to the collective. We're talking one billion. What's the catch? We have to do this tomorrow night. <clears throat> what is this? What are you doing here? The codes. Hands up now.
So our characters enter this farmhouse, and lo and behold, they find out that there are people chained to the wall in this farmhouse. Yikes, this can't possibly be right. It's not. There is a Sedeus in the house. What is that? I don't know. It's something they made up for the movie, because when I looked it up, it came up as a chair or something. And I did get one thing that said it was a uh, level 16 in some anime game or something. But in any event, one of these things is living in the house, and it's preying on all these people. And now our group of mercenaries runs right into it with one exceptionally good. Wow, this, is, this turns in from a, a top-notch action thriller into a pretty decent horror film. So what is a Zadeus? It's kind of difficult to describe. It It's sort of a vampire, but it's sort of a demon, too. Okay, remember all the way back, the Francis Ford Coppola's version of Bram Stoker's Dracula, the one with Keanu Reeves, Gary Oldman? Yeah, that one. There's a, a scene in there where Gary Oldman takes on a kind of a persona that's a demonic bat. This thing looks pretty close to it. The costume was made by a company called George, and they've done a pretty decent job. And now we have two different characters, too, because the uh, man, the person who has the farmhouse is Luther, and he is played by Tim McKinney. But when it turns into the demon, well, then the demon is played by Justin Price. And I mention that because, in essence, this is Justin Price's movie. He is the writer, the director, and the director of photography, the cinematographer for this film. And he also gets to uh, to play the demon as well. Folks, I had a lot of fun with this movie. I did not expect to see the change coming. And, and I'll tell you I'll tell you what I compare it to. Do you remember an absolutely hilarious movie called At the World's End? And it was with Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, among others. And the whole idea was these guys were going to try to recapture their youth, their college days, and do the bar run that they did back in the day when they were youngsters. You're watching this movie as it goes along, and you think that what it is is just a comedy about a bunch of older guys trying to relive their youth. And then you come up with the bathroom scene. And I'm telling you, once the bathroom scene hit, I lost, I lost it in the theater. I was howling like crazy. And I never stopped laughing all the way to the end. Okay? Great movie. Well, this one you won't have many laughs at because it's not a comedy. But it really does throw you for a loop because you start off on an action flick and then, bang, you're caught in the middle of a, of a horror film. And Justin's done himself a nice job putting this script together. Let me know, uh, tell you who else is, uh, is around in this one. Uh, for stars, we have... Franziska Schistler. And uh, Franziska is important to know because she is the woman in the mercenary group. Uh, she is Sage. And she's also the film's editor. <laughs> I like this in these independent movies when you have people doing a lot of different uh, roles and wearing different hats. So she's put this together rather well and she stars as the the female, uh, one of the females inside this mercenary group. She does a nice job. And, uh, you know, there may be something special to her character as well, but you got to stick around to the end to find out. Also starring in this is Alex Brown, Chase Garland, Olivia Rivera, Mike Markoff. And those are your stars. Those are your people involved in it. They're members of the, of the, uh, uh, assassination, the mercenary team, if you will. You know, when this opened up with the uh, gun battle with the FBI, I thought, man, this is this is really uh, going to go good because it, it's starting out with a key action scene and everything is going to be pretty, you know, pretty gun ho on this thing. Uh, and it, 
you know, when when the switch came, when the change came, uh, it caught me totally off guard. I got to tell you, uh, there's one little foible about this movie, and that is that they've taken Justin's voice when he is the demon, and, and obviously they've put it through a, a sound processor. And there are times when the demon is is talking, especially to Sage, and wow, I, it you can't understand. I mean, the effects to make a demonic voice, I understand that, but they, they maybe did them a little too heavy and a little too hard, and you really can't understand too much of what he's saying. And that could be the only foible I, I find on this. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you, this is well above average. I think you're going to like this one, especially when the, you know how you listen to these songs, these electronic songs, and everybody says, wait for the drop. <laughs> you know, bah, 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 that type of thing. This movie does the same thing. It's going along as an action flick, and you're riding with it, and then kaboom, it comes down with this, and it's, it's a pretty decent horror film from there on in with nice little ties to some traditional uh, horror as well. I think you're going to like this one. It is called Wrong Place, Wrong Time. And now that you have learned what you have learned, here endeth your lesson.